Quite a while back, somebody posted another SCP SL iceberg that happens to be the largest one yet. It's surprising that it hasn't been covered, but that's exactly what we'll be doing today. I also added timestamps in the description if you wanna skip the first few categories or go to a specific one. Anyways, buckle up, grab a toast, or your own 99 plush, or whatever, but yeah, here we go. Peanut was the nickname of the old model of 173 before the rework. Site 02 is the official site SCPSL takes place in. COM45 is a difficult to obtain weapon consisted of 3 COM15s. D-Boys is the nickname for D-Class. You can code plugins for your server and do some really cool stuff. Tutorial class is an unused team slash person concept which isn't in the vanilla game and is often used by server admins or in custom plugins. Coin, you're not sure why you want to carry this around. So around 2 years ago the Parabellum update was released which started a sequence of updates that will change SCP's models from older containment breach looking to more modern and sexy models. Hubert Mosca is the original indie developer of SCPSL before he founded Northwood. Cassie is the loud and annoying AI broadcast system that erupts you from the task force. There's usually seasonal events for Halloween and Christmas. Northwood sometimes has dev streams where they talk about upcoming features and so on. Pink candy's item you can only get in certain servers and by eating it you explode. Old 096 looked like an abomination and could kill people even if they didn't look at him. Com15's owner is Dr. David Bonardi, a junior researcher who basically rants how hard it was to obtain it legally and how he can't carry it concealed. There's a bunch of Easter egg mini Hubert balls around the facility, usually in upgrade stations or vents. The clutter system is a mechanic used primarily during seasonal events to add stuff like pumpkin candles and so on. Fusion weapons were one of the first guns in SCPSL and they were totally balanced. SCP-096 has an unused grapple animation where he goes Hulk smash mode. During Halloween, SCP-330's candies had different effects and are honestly my favorites. You could jump hella high or just become a marshmallow monster and kill everybody. This is well known amongst older players of SCPSL, but until around one year ago SCP-049-2s, aka okay, Zombie, used to have anti-bow stance when standing still. Motion sensors are unremoved, if even implemented feature. I couldn't find much on them, but they supposedly used to beep whenever somebody moved past it, alerting anyone nearby something was close. They can apparently be found in the 6.13.17 version, but I never tried it myself nor found any footage of it. In old versions of the game, you could no clip into 079's chamber and see Super Dope written on the computer. Super Dope doesn't have any meaning as far as I know, but it's a neat little easter egg since the game is really super dope. Cafeteria is a removed room previously located in Ancient Zone. It was pretty similar to the containment breach one and contained SAP-294, which you could put coins into but you won't actually get anything in return. The Scorpion submachine gun is an removed weapon which guards used to spawn with until it was replaced by the MP7, which was then replaced by today's FSP-9. Quite of an evolution. In the earliest versions of the game, it had a functional tutorial teaching the basics of card access, movement, and 914 usage, and so on. I honestly think this is much needed today, since sometimes I run into people who don't even know I'm on their team. Like, what the hell, man? Cup is an removed item which served no purpose. I will assume it was supposed to be used with SCP-294 in the cafeteria, but since that was scrapped, so was the cup. Halloween effects I assume reference to the change of human models, SCP models, their descriptions, Tesla gate effects, and so on. This version of the game is only here once a year, so it's pretty special. Old Chaos Insurgency scars look like this, and call me crazy, but I kinda prefer it over the current one. Old grenades, besides referring to the older models of today's grenades, also refer to the Positronic grenade, which we already covered, and then removed Smoke grenade, which is essentially today's SCP-244, but more probable. Empty servers refer to all the servers down the server list that are never played, which is quite sad honestly. On the flashbang model there's a phone number you can call, and when you do you get a low quality recrawl. The recruitment theory is an interesting conspiracy that the Site02 is a controlled containment breach loop, created to train and recruit MTFs. 
which will explain why the game repeats itself and how the foundation has the budget for all those poor MTFs and their equipment getting shredded for the 1000th time. John Kalos is the name of the main Class D model. SCP-457, the Burning Man, was in the early versions of the game and shared a model with SCP-106. His main gimmick was that he dealt burning damage to humans nearby and walked like this. This game has plenty of unused models such as 3 female class D models, 3 scientist models and multiple female MTF models with and without gas masks. Honestly, I think it's for the better they weren't added since the SCP-ASL community is already done better. The really old SCP-079 didn't have any generators or auxiliary power, but rather one ability called Hack. By click and holding a door, he could hack it, which will take time depending on the door type and position. After hacking it, he could lock, close and open it with keybinds. Keep in mind, he could only use the doors he hacked, and doors may take up to 30 seconds or more to hack, so that must have been pretty painful. Oh right, and since he didn't have any generators back then to recontain them, all you had to do is walk into his chamber and shoot him. This is how the pre-release logister looked like and there's nothing really remarkable about it except it did less damage. Remember those player tutorials? Well, they also contained the shooting range which was removed alongside them. Coal is an item you could get from the Christmas trees during the 2022 Christmas update and it also had a second version with a smaller spawn rate, which if you threw at a human will teleport him to the nearest SCP, that of course had many trolling opportunities. Evil 999 was the nickname for the temporary model of 99 during the 2019's April Fools update and other than having changed vision, his attack sounds were also more pitched. SCPSL never had a real customization system, but the closest we had to that was the ability to choose between two characters before playing, and those characters are the current John Kalos and the Charlotte Richer, which spawned with a janitor card. The time loop theory, just like the recruitment one, claims that the Saito 2 is in a time loop, but it isn't used for training and recruiting MTF, but rather to keep some very dangerous SCPs stuck in this repeating container breach. The SCPs we see in game are easily handled with enough firepower, but who knows, maybe there's some SCPs we don't see. This one's kinda weird, but the you know too much refers to the SCP-2521, which according to Aiva, an image of SCP-2521 is used as a placeholder asset for the F1 menu to show the layout in the editor, which means it doesn't appear in game. In the earliest versions of the game, the VT room had plants on both sides. SCP-106 has an unused death animation where it turns into a statue. Well, as far as I know, there were no official backroom features in SCPSL, but there were many modded backroom servers and they were quite cool, honestly. Ammo meter is an removed item which was used to see how much ammo a player has and it was used also to drop ammo. Thanks god dropping ammo is now simple because tablets are already annoying as they are, so I certainly can't imagine using an ammo meter. Body in the vents was a limited time easter egg in which, if you bring the gun into 173's chamber, you could shoot a clipboard hanging from a vent and a clipboard will fall down, with the documentation of a deceased person whose body was removed from the vents. The void rooms could be referring to multiple things, and those are 1. In some servers there was an AFK bot which would sit in the voice to apparently make the voice shot quality better, and 2. During many early access betas there were many bug rooms that would just lead you into the void. If you know anything else about these void rooms, Feel free to comment, but I think this should have covered it all. Roasted is an unused achievement you could get by surviving a Tesla gate effect as an SCP. The Lantern was an event exclusive item found in the Halloween 2021 event, and it replaced the flashlight. In the early versions of the game, when a player died, they will turn into this ragdoll. This ragdoll can only now be seen in Discord when somebody is playing SCPSL and is on Spectator, hence it was named the Spectator Ragdoll. Speaking of Discord, did you know that me and the local community of chats, because I consider every one of my viewers and subscribers inherently based, have a Discord server. We have sneak peeks, giveaways, and a very welcoming general chat, so feel free to join if you wish, but let's go on with the iceberg. Back when Hubert was an independent dev, he would add easter eggs for his top stream donors. I couldn't find any footage of it, but I'm sure if you play around a bit in the old versions, you will encounter them. 
106 Chamber camera is probably referring to the earliest version of 106 Chamber, which included the control switches and a disabled camera monitor. Or it's just referring to the fact you could jump around on the cameras in his chamber before they were made transparent. The SCPSL Orge was an casual death stream, which was then raided by O79, which eventually led people to a Discord server link, in which Northwood was giving a bunch of puzzles to the members and it was kind of like Squid Games. The whole thing is pretty massive, but I have linked a Google Docs document that explains and tells the whole tale. Before, when the game was in a more chaotic state, there would be many players teaming up with either SCPs or opposing teams which would make the rounds last seemingly endless. Now, luckily the map and general style of game is being slowly reworked to make it less camping friendly. Even though the decontamination timer says 15 minutes, it actually takes faster and lasts only 11 minutes and 45 seconds. There's many concept art of a storage depot that was never added. UZ, UMP, M4 and STR-512 are all removed weapons, but weirdly I couldn't find a single image of them. However, assuming they were once in the game, you can probably find them in the old versions during 2017 to 2018, because that's where the last only mention of them is. Due to the game not being so popular in the start, often you could find yourself alone in the server or with a smaller amount of players which when spread across the massive facility will make you feel alone. Joker's Playground was a popular server which was shut down due to the owner being a pedo or well getting accused of being one. The old chaos card was named The Breaking Card and looks like this. Version 3617B is considered the last version of SCPSL because it isn't talked about much and is probably, if not certainly, one of the first playable versions of SCPSL. During the 2019's April Fool's update, guards were colored pink. A long time ago, hiding was a mechanic rumored to soon be added but never was. HCC overhaul could be referring to the fact that the old heavy containment zone looked identical to the containment breach one and was then refreshed into what we have today. Or that in the far future we will receive a facility update, but who knows. Text chat was a feature many begged to be added, but it never was. Well, that's the end of the iceberg. I hope you enjoyed because this took months to make, but yeah. Have a great day and maybe watch some more videos, I don't know.